Hey, welcome back, everyone, to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on this Saturday morning. So great to have you with us. Hope you're enjoying your morning thus far. Perhaps you're kicking back with a cup of coffee or some hot tea with a little splash of milk in it. What kind of milk is that? Is it cow milk? Is it uh, goat milk? Well, sorry, I have a call coming in here. (laughs) I have to end it. Uh, But have you thought of sheep milk? Well, this uh, question came up earlier this week for me, and I said, I haven't heard of it really, and I didn't know that sheep had milk. And so we uh, contacted a local dairy here that is their specialty and are inviting them onto the show now. In fact, Alexis Negranti of Negranti Dairy and Artisan Creamery is here in studio with us. Welcome to the show, Alexis. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. So I'm, I, I have to know. Because I watched a great video that was done by Cal Poly students that highlights your dairy. And uh, you said, I just had the idea one day and I told my husband and ordered them and (laughs) boom, that was the situation. Uh, I'm just going to pass. Sorry, I'm going to pass that phone up. I think it's one of our guests coming up and they're probably calling to tell us they have a different number. So it's probably an important (laughs) call to take. Hand that off to uh, one of our producers, Ricardo. Okay, so uh, how did you get the idea? Did you, did you see something in a magazine? or um, It was pretty much a whirlwind. I took a <laughs> cheese-making class at Cal Poly, and I thought, oh, this would be really fun, you know, yeah. to do something that involves, <clears throat> excuse me, both animals and cooking. And then I thought about it, and cows were just a little too big and a little too common. And then I thought, well, what about goats? And I thought... Everybody has goats. Right. I need to do something different. And you can't so, go into a restaurant nowadays with a goat cheese salad or you know sandwich or something. So yeah, exactly. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do sheep because I raised sheep for meat all through 4-H and FFA as um, a young child. Uh-huh. And so I thought, I can do this. And you grew up here on the Central Coast. I did. I'm from San Luis Obispo, and my husband, Wade Negranti, is from Cayucas. Okay, so a good local family. And <laughs> uh, so you thought, okay, sheep. And did you know at the time that you could milk them? Um, you know, that was just an experiment. I thought, well, it has to be done, right? And I looked into it, and some of the best cheeses come from sheep milk. Wow. So Now, something that is uh, interesting, it came up here in the studio during the commercial break. Uh, we have a couple of people that are lactose intolerant, and uh, you said that most people can digest sheep milk. Yeah, the fatty acid chains in sheep milk are shorter, and so they're much easily digested Uh um, by people who typically can't digest milk. Right. Now, how many sheep did you ordered a lot? (laughs) You you told your husband, well, your husband said, all right, we're going to have to think about this. And you said, too late. I've already ordered (laughs) several. Well, yeah, we I decided to get sheep in December. And that is the season where they're breeding or they're pregnant. And so, I mean, obviously you start milking once they lamb. They have their baby and then they provide milk, which is early spring. And so we, um, it was hard to find. I would have to find a pregnant you. Oh, right. And a few of them. So I found a list of sheep breeders in the U.S. and emailed about 50 people. Three people responded. <laughs> and out of the three, I picked one from North Carolina. And we started off with just uh, three U's. And now we have over twenty. So. Wow! So it's 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 grown quite a bit. Yeah, in the last ten months. And you were oh, it's only been ten months. Okay, and so you yeah. were really, you were really determined. What, what were you doing before that you uh, decided I'm not doing that any longer? Um, I was just at a desk job. Yeah. And um, you know, I loved the people, but I just thought I need to do be doing something hands on, hands on outdoors. That I'm passionate about. Yeah, and so you need to milk them twice a day. Yep. 5.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. So you've already done the morning milking. Yep. I know. They said, can you make it at 8? And I said, oh, that's no problem. Right. I know, because Cora, our producer who booked the segment, uh, I said, can you see if she can be in for the 8 o'clock segment? Cora said, oh, she's got to do milkings in the morning. I said, no, I watched the video. She's. <laughs> I wasn't sure how long it done by then. <laughs> I wasn't sure how long it lasted. Now, uh, right now, currently, you're using the milk to make ice cream. I am. Is that the only product line right now? Yes. Okay, Mm -hmm. so right now it's strictly ice cream. And uh, what's the process for that? Um, Well, you know, we milk the sheep, and then what we do is we basically make a custard with the uh, milk, and then we add raw organic cane sugar to it, and then locally sourced ingredients, and we have a small machine that makes about a gallon and a half at a time. Okay. And 
So it's we, a pretty small batch. Yeah. And uh, you primarily distribute these to specialty stores and restaurants? Yes. And we start Farmer's Market uh, July 5th. Downtown oh. San Luis. So, oh, the yeah. big Thursday night one. Yeah, uh -huh. so I'm really excited. Oh, that'll be. I think you'll do well uh, at that market. That seems like something where people are a little adventurous and they'll want to try something different. Yeah, and we're now offering individual four ounce servings, so that if people would just want something small after, you know, their great barbecue or something yeah. like that, it's, it'll be really great for them. Right, and if I understand it correctly, and you may have expanded since then, uh, your products are available uh, from. The Pismo area to Paso Robles. Yeah, you can look on our website, negrantidairy.com, and under uh, the Find Products tab, and you can find where you can get our ice cream. Okay, now sheep um, don't just make milk, they make wool also, right? Wool and meat, yep. And so uh, is this like a multi-layered thing? Like you, are you also harvesting, would you say it that way, harvesting them for the wool? <laughs> I don't know what the terminology uh, is, is that right? <laughs> harvesting yeah. generally means... Um, slaughtering oh right yeah okay well yeah <laughs> i don't want to think about that but uh, so no <laughs> right okay <laughs> but uh yeah we do sell the wool okay there we go and we also sell the lamb and you also sell the lamb mm -hmm. as well and so you have just a, a regular operation going and it's in where is it in the paso area we're off of vineyard drive okay. on the west side uh-huh and was this the first time you've moved up that direction or you were already living up there when you decided to uh do this uh, we had moved up there, and within two months, I said, well, we have this acreage. I'm going to ah, do something. <laughs> right. Exactly. So. Now, um, I know there are a lot of hurdles to starting a small business because I've done that exact thing, you know, but I don't have the health department coming in here, <laughs> as you can clearly tell, uh, checking to see, you know, if everything is the right temperature, if everything's clean. Uh, how difficult is it to to get those licenses and be approved as a facility that makes ice cream? You know, it was challenging, but I just had the attitude of it's easier to work with the inspectors than to fight them. Yeah. And so I just said, OK, what do you need? And I just made it compliant. And I feel like that was just the easiest route is just say, OK, let's be friends and let's work through this. Yeah. And then. And now, currently, you're, you use all natural ingredients. I love the fact that you use the uh, cane sugar uh, instead of uh, some sort of a high fructose corn syrup or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you've got the natural milk that you make right there. Mm -hmm. What about organic? I know that's not uh, – it's a long process to get that organic certification. Is that something you're working toward? Yeah, well, most of our ingredients are organic. Um, for me, I, it's more important to support local farmers right. than to go, you know, I could buy local strawberries or I could buy organic strawberries from the valley. So I would rather support a local farmer. Right. To me, that's more important. And I think um, so many of the strawberry farmers are starting to turn that direction anyway. So maybe you'll be able to get some good organic so. strawberries right yeah. here, you know, would be, uh, I hope so. would ideally be the case. We have some, uh, photos, uh, Ricardo's back from the um, hallway now and uh, can show some photos of you, of, first of all, of the sheep and your the outdoor area, and then also the ice cream making process and the milking process. Uh, these were taken from the video that the Cal Poly students made. You were surprised by this video that what they come up, they, they approached you and said, hey, we want to make this video. And then all of a sudden it's getting all these hits online. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, I'm so excited about it. But yeah, it was just a class project, and um, I said, yeah, sure, come on out, do whatever you need to do, and they did a short interview, and it's just taken off, so <laughs> it worked out really well. <laughs> yeah, how do you like that? You know, that's, Cal Poly's great. We've got two interns working with us uh, throughout yeah. the summer, which uh, they're already helping me out immensely. I was gone last week. Patty Pyburn, who does our news, was out is out for the next couple of weeks. Uh, poor thing is in France. I feel terrible for her. <laughs> well, maybe she'll get some sheep cheese. <laughs> exactly. And you know, we have a, we have less than a minute left. Anthony, is there a chance? I just want to taste, you can just grab any of them there. I want to taste it really quick because I've been so curious for the past uh, week or so about what this tastes like. And Alexis, you have a spoon there, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm going to, this is the strawberry basil. What made you think yes. to put basil and strawberry together? I don't know. Because <laughs> it's great in drinks. Um, I love it that way. They have they make a good uh, wa uh, sparkling water like that at one of the local restaurants. Yeah. That is delicious. And it doesn't seem to have as much of the uh, taste that goat milk can have sometimes. Yeah, it's a very common misconception. People are always saying, oh, what do you do? And I say, I milk sheep. And they say, oh, well, I don't like goat milk. And I said, well, that's good because like, it doesn't right. taste like goat milk. <laughs> I got sheep. <laughs> Alexis Negrante, you'll find her link at eatdrinkexplore.com. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. All right, we're back in just a moment.
The Eat Drink Explore radio show is 